How's it going YouTube? Today's video, I'm gonna go back a little bit to the ore stacker because I know a lot of people here do watch ore stackers and I want to answer the question of how popular is ore stacker currently in Expedition League because the popularity of skills is a lot of what dictates what gets nerfed in the next league. I do think that GGG actually looks at the most popular ascendancies, most popular skills, whether it's on POE Ninja or your own internal data. And then pretty much go, we should nerf this, we should nerf that, and that's how everything gets nerfed. But basically, I'm going to try to go into the question of how popular Aura Stacker is. And the answer is that it's actually kind of getting more popular. I, I do get a lot of people this. in my chat asking me about Aura Stackers, so there is that. Now, I also wanted to go in more depth about this character. I did do some upgrades. Namely some jewels and an amulet and I did do a lot more 100% or Delirium Mirror Tropical Islands. A lot of people say that oh how do you struggle in a Delirium Mirror Tropical Island but Turns End makes Tropical Island actually harder than 100% Delhi in the second level. So overall this character is not too bad, it's really fun to play, I do like playing the Wander play style. However, its movement speed is leaves much to be desired without having a whirling blade skill or something like that and not having instant elusive with night blade on the frost blades character. It's a character that kind of works but it could be better and it's kind of like is this the best version of this build that could be possible and this answer is if you want to play a wander at this budget level of around like sub one mirror this is probably the best you're going to be able to get. Because like in stacker is gonna be not, it's not gonna feel too good to play in stacker, whether it's an occultist or assassin or scion version with around one meter worth of gear, it's just not gonna be enough money to make the build viable. So, right now, the build feels pretty good. I can do all content in the game. It's kind of squishy at this amount of HP, and I did drop the perma berserk setup because it was a little too annoying to play. Although I do think that it has merit to be used. And I think it's actually pretty strong too, but having full shaped items is actually pretty important. But let me get into the gear overview. Then I'm going to talk about the popularity of Aura Stacker and Expedition League. And yeah. So right now, this character, even though it's kind of young, I feel like getting gear upgrades is pretty hard. And that's always a bad sign for a build because it means that its capped out potential is not as high. And without higher cap potential or like the ceiling, it means that the bill will fail to scale after a certain amount of currency investment. That's why so many people like the Aura Stacker, right? Because the Aura Stacker, if you keep putting money into it, it will keep getting stronger and stronger multiplicatively. So right now, I'm going to go through each of my pieces of gear and then go over what could change. So this wand right here, it's good. T2, T4, T1 gonna be hard to get anything better than this what i could do is try to recraft the suffixes to try to get attack speed t1 and then use ashling so that i can get another suffix on it besides crit chance for spells now this is probably pretty good and i do think that that might be something i do when i get more currency so this wand right here if it was a mere tier wand would be around like 15 percent more damage so this helm i kind of want more resist so the dexterity could become resist Otherwise, it could be elevated crit multi, and it's already elevated shaping. And I think the mods, the prefixes are perfect. The only thing is I wish I had 90 life instead of 60. But this is pretty much an ideal helm, except the dexterity will probably be some resist, and the multi will be elevated. So there's not that much room to improve on this helm. Now, this uh, Tempest Heart Onyx Amulet, I was able to buy today. I pretty much got this because I needed some uh, accuracy. As you can see, I still have some accuracy issues. I'm at only 97%. I could try to level up precision more or take accuracy nodes on a tree, which would actually help out a lot because it makes it so I only have 93% chance to hit. And as anyone knows in any MMO game, having low chance to hit is a death sentence. So I will probably try to fix it. So right now, this amulet has a dead suffix, which is plus 12 strength. So what that means is that it could have another resist. So you can see here, in order to get a character with a lot of resists, oh, I actually have 71 cold res. That explains why I died in some of the mapping today. But you have to have near perfect gear when you're using like so many unique items that you actually can't like prioritize resists on. 
or you have items that have so much damage mods on it that you can't get resist. So having these like dead suffixes is a huge problem in perfecting a character. So these shapes call of the Brotherhoods you can't really do much about. You could technically try to corrupt them, but the cold and lightning res is actually really huge right now. So the eternity shroud is probably the biggest source of damage upgrade currently. Just getting a plus two projectiles is gonna be huge and same as like plus one and all gems. I do think a plus one and 48% damage is probably the best roll as it also increases KB and KB I think is one of the biggest uh, limiting factors for the clear in this build. So right now, we, this shield is actually pretty insane. I actually bought this for two to three X. I'm actually surprised. So you can see it's like all T1s. It has T1 attack speed, T1 fire res, T1 all res. It also has like gains cold as extra chaos. Only thing I can hope for better is just more spell damage or a T1 roll of the cold as extra chaos. So this shield I feel like is irreplaceable realistically. Now this fingerless silk gloves, I could fix up by fixing the suffix, the prefixes so I can get faster proge too, which would be a big increase in damage but not too huge. And then I could also craft life on it and then try to gamble or resist somehow. So I'd probably try to use Ashling or something, but not really sure if I'm going to recraft this. This gloves is very, very good still. Belt is a big source of upgrade. This is obviously only T3 life and crafted LE damage so you can get like a lot more resist all T1 resist and then T1 life and then it could even be a hunter belt with uh, shaper influence and getting percent life but this would cost like 15 20 x right to get a perfect belt I just don't really want to spend the money at that stage flasks of course are going to be the same so you can see there's some upgrades but you can see the light at the end of the tunnel right for all these pieces of gear but I guess it's not really that much different than aura stacker the main problem with this build's infinite scaling potential is the jewels. The jewels, if you see, I have to get resist because I lack a lot of resist on my gear. And that also means that you can't get multi. So multi is usually the best way of scaling a character. And I do think that... So this character only has, what, 478% multi. It does have 556 on the power 7 because I'm running crit damage gem. So the main problem with this whole setup is that you, there's not enough crit multi on kinetic blast. And usually you get crit multi by you getting crit multi on your jewel. But in order to get crit multi on jewels, you need to have the skill to have tags. So right now KB has no tags, which means you can't use crit multi with lightning, crit multi with spells, or anything like that. You can only use generic crit multi. And part of the reason with why this skill is like mediocre is the same reason as why EK is not that good for damage scaling for an aura stacker. Because you can't get that much crit multi and you're kind of stuck around like four to five hundred percent with max gear. And this is with 38% multi on my amulet and 20% on my blizzard crown. So that is a pretty big issue at the moment, but I do think that we can fix it later. And overall, most of these things are these large clusters are pretty good. I don't think there's any better large cluster than Storm's Hand and Fuel to Fight or Feed the Fury. And the tree is another big problem with this build, right? It feels very like there's no creativity in that the points I need to take. I need to travel over here to get the jewel sockets. I have to go there. A wind dancer, I need to go. I need to take phase acro and I need to go up to get these wand nodes. And it's just a sad fact that it's a lot of travel points to go to the wand nodes. Like you could say that maybe Raider is better for this build, but in the end, Berserker scaling with... Uh, 40% more damage and then also Crave the Slaughter and Bliss Charges is just too good to pass up. Attack speed scaling is always going to be everything. Now another thing about the build is Shield Charge is a pretty annoying movement skill. And I thought that it would be okay with enough move speed or uh, enough move speed and uh, attack speed. But it gets stuck on too many things right. So you like, the, it's like it's only really good on Tropical Island and other wide open maps. And that's something to keep in mind. And this is pretty much just me bringing up the pros and cons of the build. So if I had to say like the biggest pro is the single target. The single target is amazing. You can one shot any boss. It does get a little bit more sketchy if you're doing invitation with multiple. I'm not really sure how the feared would go. I will try it soon. So that's something to keep in mind because once you run out of rage, you can't really get the rage back unless you were doing the perma berserk setup I had previously. 
But the cons are, I don't think KB is enough damage this. without a headhunter to do juice maps. I always thought that KB would have amazing damage, but if you're doing 100% or 80% deli without the headhunter, I don't think KB alone is enough to carry unless you have extremely good gear. So the damage is extremely high, the survivability is a little bit on the low side, and you do leech back your full life though, and it's like kind of like old school vault pack. As long as you're attacking and you have a lot of mobs to attack into, with the Vitality Watcher's Eye, you pretty much leech your full life to f in one hit. So the biggest pro is that it's fun to play, right? It's always nice seeing the nice KB uh, animation or whatever this MTX is. And it's nice to see all these shiny characters on my body. And that's why we play the game, right? To have fun. So I do think if you're trying to play a wander around this budget, this is the best choice you could possibly do. And you will be unable to find a more um, better combination or fit for a wander. Maybe a raider, but we'll see. But now I wanted to talk about the, how popular Ore Stacker is currently in Expedition. So a lot of people wonder like how popular is Ore Stacker going to be. And I do think that Ore Stacker will probably be one of the most popular builds by the end of the league. And it is actually already showing to be the case. You can see here it's actually at 4% played. Making it one of the more popular skills. And you might think that oh it's mostly people just playing some carry builds. But... It's not that popular as only 60% of the people are Ascendant, so that means out of that 4%, a uh, decent chunk are playing the build Assassin and Occultist because they're trying to play with a support bot. So you can see all of these Assassins and Occultists are not actually Aura Stackers. So if you sort it by DPS, you can see every single person is an Aura Stacker. So now we wanted to go look at some key differences between the Aura Stackers because it's kind of interesting to see how the meta shifts. So right now, if you look at it right here, you can see 84% of the people are using shavs. So what this means is that no one is really playing sack of walls this time around. And the reason behind that is that the damage is just not high enough right now with sack of walls unless you have extremely, extremely good gear. So like this person is the only person who is actually playing sack of walls and this person probably has mirror gear on every single slot. And yeah, you can see he has a mirrored helm because it's backwards and then his boots are also mirror worthy because it's five pierce. So you can see in order to play Aura Stacker with Sack of Walls and CI, you have to have extremely, extremely good gear. I know a lot of people always ask, oh, can I play Sack of Walls at the start? And the answer is always going to be no, unless you want to suffer. Another thing to keep in mind is voices, right? Because a lot of people were playing four large clusters before. And you can see that most of the people, 90% of the people are using four uh, voices, meaning that the four large cluster is no longer a big option. So like these people are playing four large clusters at the moment. And this is this was actually a pretty popular, what's it called, archetype before, but I don't really know why it fell out of favor. It does seem like the four large cluster setup does correlate very well with the CI. And that's what they use for CI is using four large clusters. Not really sure why, but I guess it's just more damage and it helps out with the damage because four large clusters is more damage than voices for sure. But it does require you to sacrifice a lot of like defenses. You can see that these people who have four large clusters can never take this ES mana wheel, which a lot of people take. And it can't take any of the extra damage nodes like crit multi. So you can see if you do four large clusters, you're pretty much pigeonholed into doing this tree. And there's really nothing you can even do about the tree besides taking all these nodes that are suggested here. Now the other thing of note for ore stackers is Malagaros versus Hands of the High Templar. And we can see that Malagaros is really not that popular anymore. Like there's some people that use it. But the majority of people are not using Malagaros. They're using Hands of the High Templar I'm pretty sure or some other pair of gloves that help out. So people aren't using Hands of the High Templar and aren't using Malagaros. What are they using? So let's see. What are these people actually using who aren't using the gloves? So these people use Asinaps. So I guess Asinaps is the other option. So once you get rid of Asinaps, let's see what we have left. So these people are using Facebreakers. So pretty much you have 
four different gloves that are being used by Aura Stackers, Hands of High Templar, Malagaros, Asinafs for clear, and Face Breakers for really, really beginner builds. You can see most of these people have very low damage who aren't using um, the before three. The three I mentioned before, this person just has rare gloves. Don't really know about that, but I guess whatever works. So this person has Doriani's Fist. What the heck? I don't really know why you would use this. I guess he's just using this for the energy shield and curse on Ellie weakness. It's always interesting to see what people come up with. But most people are probably using face breakers if they're not using that. And that's because there's a card that gives you double implicit corrupt face breakers. Meaning you can pretty much get pretty close to hands of the high templars at a fraction of the cost. Because it has 30 crit multi on it. And lastly, let's see, everyone's using Prism Guardian, right? Yeah, so this is pretty much correlates one-to-one -one with the Shavs. And I don't know about this, how are people not using Watcher Size? Like, that's just, that's like a cardinal sin. So most of these people are pretty much just new and beginners, or not new and beginners, but they're just new. They're just in the beginning stages of their gear, but everyone should always use a Watcher's Eye. And Cinder Swallow is kind of an interesting flask. The Cinder Swallow Urn is a pretty bad flask. And it's surprising that 73% of the people use it because you actually cannot keep this flask up at all. Maybe with overflowing chalice and juice maps, but the ES gain you get from killing mobs is huge. 66% of the people are using Alpha's Hell versus Rare Helmet. I do think the upgrade path is always Hands of the High Templar into a Rare Helmet and then into the Boots. So Headhunter is on 46% of the people. That's pretty impressive. Pure Talent is a pretty bad jewel overall, but a lot of people need it for the attributes, right? So overall, you can see that compared to last league, Ore Stackers are in a pretty strong state, but you can see that a lot of them are trying to utilize to get as much damage as possible. There's less people using Malagaros, and there's less people playing uh, Sack of Walls and CI. And everyone's pretty much playing Low Life, using a Prism Guardian, using Hands of the High Templar, and using Voices instead of Four Large Clusters. And that's just pretty much how the cookie has crumbled in Expedition League. I don't really know how much more popular Spark will get or or Stackers will get in general, but I will expect to see that this number go up and up. It is also incredibly skewed as or Stackers are probably one of the few classes in the game that prioritizes buying five-way carries. You can see the number of level 100 or Stackers playing Spark is probably significantly high like you can see the whole there's a lot more of these players than any other because most people don't get 100 on soft core right and they pretty much have to buy a five-way carry so this number is probably a lot more skewed than it shows in ggg's database that isn't like for all of the top players on the ladder because i think right now it only shows from 96 to 100 which is probably not a good representation so that's why like poe ninja is also not the best representation of the skills because it doesn't account for any of the skills that like people who aren't so progressed in the game use. So these are pretty much the best skills at the end of the game. But it doesn't mean that these are the most popular skills in the game period at all levels. So that's something to keep in mind. Just want to give a little bit of an update on how the Aura Stacker is progressing in this league. And now I'm going to showcase a little bit of mapping footage with the KB Wander. And yeah.
overall this character very fun to play does have its shortcomings in that it's not like perfect synergy but hey it's a wander i do think a shaped head on it would come a long way for clearing but obviously that's not a realistic goal for most people so i cannot do this without the head on her i guess you could put on a head on her but you do lose a lot of damage if you're full shape versus not having a shaped one some do exist, but they're like really overpriced. And at that price, I would probably just roll a different build, right? Next on the line, I kind of wanted to try out Eternity Shroud with Spectral Throw. I do know a lot of people like Spectral Throw. I do think that it could be fun trying out an old skill with the claws. And the good part about Spectral Throw is that even if you're stunned, the Spectral Throws are still coming out of you and they will return back to you so you still get the leech, meaning that you should be unkillable unless you get one-shotted, right? Or at least I hope so, as long as you don't get stunned or anything, but it should be fun. Maybe I'll try out Spectral Helix too, but that's on the agenda, let me know down below. If you want to see Spectral Helix or Spectral Throw next with Eternity Shroud. And on the topic of Eternity Shroud, I do like to talk about how most builds in this game are build archetypes rather than build skills. So build archetypes are like Aura Stacker, Eternity Shroud, In Stacker, Strength Stacker, Totem Build, Brand Builds. And that's pretty much like you can use different interchangeable skills, but the archetype remains that that's the main way of it dealing damage. Like Eternity Shroud is all about conversion and chaos scaling. Aura Stacking is all about stacking ores for spells and so on and so forth. So right now we're pretty much an Eternity Shroud shaped item stacker and we'll try some more new skills as we have to set up already. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more mirrors and exhausts than I do and see you next time. Bye.